Brookfield Asset Management came in in the number two spot in the 2022 PERE 100 list, which ranks real estate investment management firms based on the amount of institutional capital raised over the last five years. Brookfield is an absolute powerhouse in the real estate industry with over $250 billion in assets under management just in their real estate division alone and over 500 million square feet of commercial space in their portfolio. And at the head of this company is a CEO by the name of Bruce Flatt, who's led the firm since 2002 and is often referred to as Canada's Warren Buffett based on his own value investing strategy. And recently, Flatt has taken the time to share some of the principles that have made Brookfield so successful over the years in several different public presentations and interviews where he's talked through the methodology and the framework the company uses internally when evaluating new deals. So to help you tap into some of the wisdom that has turned Brookfield into a trusted advisor of hundreds of billions of dollars of investor capital, in this video, let's walk through three of Flat's most impactful investment principles to identify value and find profitable deals, and how you can use these same investment principles to make smarter investment decisions and to advance your own career in the real estate industry. So Brookfield has seen an incredible amount of growth over the past two decades and a $100,000 investment made in the company in 2002 would have turned into over $3.8 million today, generating a compound annual return of over 20% since that time. And relatively recently, Flat has taken the time to come out and share some of the company's investment principles that have helped Brookfield reach this level of success. And with over 30% of the firm's portfolio in the real estate sector specifically, I wanted to make a video highlighting some of the most impactful investing strategies that he shared over the years. And the first key investment principle is related to the kinds of assets the company buys. And this is that when making investment decisions, Brookfield prioritizes buying great assets in great locations and is often willing to pay more than their competitors if they have to, to own a quality deal. Now this obviously doesn't mean that price doesn't matter, but this does mean to look for well-located, high quality assets that are likely to hold their value over time and provide significant returns to equity investors over the long term. In a talk Flat gave at Google in 2018, he walked through Brookfield's ownership of 245 Park Avenue in New York, which is a 48-story, 1.7 million square foot office building located in the heart of Midtown Manhattan and less than three blocks from several major employment and transportation hubs, including Grand Central Terminal, the Chrysler Building, and the MetLife Building, just to name a few. Brookfield bought the property in 1996 during a period of distress in the market, paying $432 million for the deal at that time, and then held the property through four market cycles, including the dot-com bust, 9-11, and the great financial crisis in 2008. And even though Flat admitted that at times cash flow was tight and market conditions made the property very difficult to own, Brookfield's sentiment was that in the fullness of time, as long as they were able to hold on over the long term, they were going to make money in this asset. And in 2017, they proved that thesis correct in a really big way, selling the deal for $2.2 billion 21 years later, representing a compound annual growth rate on value alone of over 8% per year, which doesn't even include the cash flow generated during the whole period or the $900 million in loan proceeds that Brookfield was able to add to the deal in 2007, which returned all initial equity capital back to investors a full 10 years before the property was sold. The lesson here is that even though the ride isn't always guaranteed to be smooth, it can often be worth it to pay a premium to acquire Class A assets in core gateway markets, and if you have a long-term hold horizon, what might feel like a premium today will often pale in comparison to what you could sell the property for 10, 15, or 20 years into the future. Now, the next core principle that Flat has shared in interviews and presentations is closely related to this last point, and this is to consider whether you'd be able or willing to hold an asset indefinitely before making an investment decision. 
Doing this helps you think about the long-term fundamentals of the property rather than just relying on your predictions around where the market might be next month or even next year, and also helps you clearly assess risk and your ability to weather the storm if market conditions were to change. Brookfield has always been very focused on measuring success based on the firm's total return on capital over the long term, which has helped the company avoid many of the mistakes that often come along with a short-term investment lens. In real estate specifically, many investors tend to zoom in on a projected internal rate of return, but this is also a time value of money calculation that inherently rewards short-term investments where equity is returned as quickly as possible. And this is why taking a look at both the IRR and the equity multiple is extremely important when evaluating an investment opportunity, since together, these metrics will tell you not only the annualized percentage return on the deal, which could be heavily impacted by the projected hold period, but also the nominal return on equity and the whole dollar multiple on capital invested. In an interview earlier this year with David Rubenstein, co-founder of the Carlyle Group, Flat was asked about what he believed the impact would be of a looming recession or other geopolitical events going on in the world right now on real asset performance, and his answer to this question really came back to this same thought process of looking for value and being prepared to hold over the long term. Flat responded with the sentiment that, again, in the fullness of time, all geopolitical events pass, and these shouldn't be the sole basis around making an investment decision. Recessions come and go, and they are really important in the moment, but if you buy quality assets in great locations and you're prepared to hold these assets over the long term, this is usually a pretty reliable strategy to generate strong returns. Now, both of these first two points are very focused on finding value, but the last point on this list is directly related to risk management and the capital stack, and this is that the greatest mistakes in real estate have historically been made by investors who have missed financed their assets. In his 2018 Talks at Google presentation, Flat walked through Brookfield's acquisition of General Growth Properties, one of the largest retail property owners in the world, and said that the only reason that Brookfield was able to buy the company at that time was because the former owners had misfinanced the business. If you're buying properties and holding these long term, you're inevitably going to run in to down cycles in the market and making sure that your business plan and your capital structure can survive in these down years is key to making sure that you're making sound investments. This is why real estate investors will often run things like a sensitivity analysis to see the impact of a worst case scenario on returns, a break even analysis to determine occupancy levels needed to remain cash flow positive, and even an exit LTV analysis to make sure the property can be refinanced or sold at the time the loan matures. Risk management in this area also involves reading the loan documents in detail and being aware of loan covenants that could put you in default, whether that that's a specific tenant vacating their space, the property as a whole dropping below a certain occupancy level, or even personal financial difficulties that could allow the lender to call the loan unexpectedly. The bottom line here is that conservative financing allows investors to weather the storm during down cycles that will inevitably come when investing in real estate and helps make sure that investors aren't forced to sell right before the market is about to turn around. Ultimately, if you can focus on prioritizing value over what's popular at any given time, you look for deals that you'd be able and willing to hold indefinitely if necessary, and you make sure to use debt financing conservatively in a way that allows you to confidently weather a down cycle in the market, I can't guarantee you'll see the same success as Brookfield has, but these things should set you up very, very well for a very profitable career investing in real estate. And if you're looking to start your career in the business or you want to learn how to analyze and underwrite your own commercial real estate investments, as always, make sure to check out our all-in-one membership training platform, Breaking a CRE Academy. A membership to the Academy will give you instant access to over 120 hours of video training on real estate financial modeling and analysis. You'll get access to hundreds of practice Excel interview exam questions, sample acquisition case studies, our entire library of pre-built acquisition development and waterfall models for multifamily, industrial, retail, office, and mixed-use deals, and you'll also get access to private 
one-on-one -on -one email based career coaching if you're looking to break into the industry and want some additional guidance and feedback along the way. And if you like this video and want to see more content on this channel on the thought process of some of the biggest names in the industry, make sure to hit the like button to let me know and let me know in the comments any other companies or individuals that you'd like to see profiled on the channel. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already to see more videos like this every single week and I'll see you in the next video.